Bread was the essential food for most people for most of recorded history. But what exactly was this original bread? Clearly not this, and not even this, more like this, sprouted bread which built civilization and sustained humanity in the Fertile Crescent, along with its best friend beer. That's right, bread and beer, beer and bread, the dynamic duo, were the two dietary staples of the ancient Mesopotamians and Egyptians, and thus had to be super nutritious if they were living off it. Bread was solid beer and beer was liquid bread. Many believe beer is responsible for civilization itself. Humans settled down to grow barley to drink booze. Makes sense, doesn't it? After food, shelter, and clothing obviously comes intoxication. And trading and paying workers with it spurred the invention of writing and so on. We have bureaucracy now, but it actually started as a bureaucracy. Women, children, grandparents, priestesses, kings, and peasants alike all drank beer, and workers got paid with jugs of beer and loaves of bread. These beers were often thick like porridge. Straws were invented for the purpose of bypassing the sediment. We wouldn't recognize the beer of the ancients, and the same goes for bread. Even the finest in whole grain sourdough loaves would be a far cry from the original bread. In order to understand what bread they ate, we must understand how beer is made. Beer is made from barley malt, or sprouted barley which has then been dried. 5,000 years of brewing and we still use the same process. Nothing too dramatic has changed. Beer is sprouted barley with yeast to ferment it, and sprouted bread is sprouted wheat with sourdough, a natural yeast, to ferment it. If beer and bread are the two oldest foods and were being made side by side, it's logical to assume that the original bread, aka the staff of life, was made from germinated grains as well. And indeed it was, well at least according to the oldest recipe of beer. Dating back nearly 4,000 years, in Sumeria, a hymn was written to Ninkasi, the goddess of beer, describing the beer being made from barley bread. Well, that barley bread must have been sprouted because only after barley is converted into malt can all the fun of beer brewing fermentation take place. Here I process my wheat for bread. I soak the wheat for a day, sprout it for a day, and then inoculate it with sourdough starter, the traditional way of making bread rise. By the time I bake it, it's a three-day process. Compared to whole grain, sprouted bread has more protein and less gluten and carbs. There's more folate, soluble fiber, antioxidants, amino acids, bioavailable nutrients like iron, magnesium, and zinc, and vitamin C, B, and E. There are less anti-nutrients, enzyme inhibitors, and allergens. It's lower on the glycemic index. Comparing sprouts to dormant grains is no small difference, but life itself. There are so many people cutting gluten and bread out of their diets, and for good reason. But I'm here to tell you that it's not that bread is bad, it's that we simply forgot how to make bread. People think whole grain is healthier than white bread, but in a way it's not. Grains are coated with phytic acid, an anti-nutrient which not only inhibits mineral absorption, but also, if ingested in large amounts for an extended period of time, can wreak havoc on the human gut. Therefore, whole grain bread must at least be fermented with sourdough in order to neutralize these plant toxins. But even still, a whole grain sourdough made from non-germinated wheat is not nourishing enough to have sustained civilization. Wheat, in its dormant state, doesn't give over the nutritional bang for your buck. Also, I must stress, sprouting wheat increases protein, which they needed if they were living off of grains. They had to get the maximum nourishment from the minimum amount of food. The only viable option is sprouted. Soaking wheat removes anti-nutrients, sprouting reduces gluten and increases nutritional value, and the fermentation further reduces gluten and anti-nutrients, making it the most nutritious way of consuming wheat with virtually none of the bad side effects. Another reason to believe the original bread was made from malted wheat is because it's more energy efficient. Here I ground both dormant and sprouted for 15 seconds and this is how it came out. They didn't have electricity, they ground it by hand. In fact, it was the women's job to grind the flour, bake the bread, and brew the beer. I'm sure they wouldn't want their work to be any harder than it already was. And if these same women were using malted barley for beer, they most likely used malted wheat for bread. It's comical to even imagine our ancestors sprouting all the barley for beer and then saying, you know, we shouldn't sprout the wheat, not necessary. 
Now let's go back to this spread. The sad part is all three steps to make real bread are missing. There's no soaking, no sprouting, and no fermenting. Try to make a beer without malt and fermentation. What a joke. With beer we got it all right. With bread we got it all wrong. Woe unto the bread, for alas, it has been forsaken. And this is the insanity of it all, that there's a blackout on the history of our original bread. In conclusion, the conspiracy is that we aren't even talking about the conspiracy. You want to know about the globalist plot to control the world? UFOs, hollow earth, knock yourselves out. Endless information about all conspiracies, except for this one, the very food responsible for us being here, lost to history. But in the meantime, while the gluten-free bandwagon is heavy underway, I'll be eating my sprouted bread every day and growing healthier and stronger because of it.